Hello, my name is CT, and I'm a member of the Clarksville CHSP Safety Committee. If you're watching this video today, it's because you signed up to be a PBD driver. And as part of that, that also means you're a part of our team, what we call Team Brown. In this part of this training, you're going to see you've already had some videos and training. We're going to try and take that to the next level now and talk about delivery methods because that's what's going to separate ourselves from our competition. At UPS, we use the term target zero, which means zero accidents, zero injuries. That's what we want to strive to do and, and part of the achievement we want you to do as a PBE driver because, again, you're part of our team. You reflect on us, we reflect on you. Now, Team Brown is not just something we just made up. It stands for something. B stands for being prepared. So we're gonna show you in this video what you need to do each morning in preparation for your day. Some stretching, some things like that. The R stands for reputation. We want you to represent the shield just as we would represent the shield. Customers see you, they see me, and vice versa. O in brown stands for obey all traffic laws. It speaks for itself. We're gonna have some demonstrations and some talks about that. The W represents work methods. There's a lot of safe work methods that we use at UPS. We want to try to teach them to, to you and within the time that we have together. And the last is the end. It says for never risking. We want to train you to be able to get to your last stop, which is the most important stop of the day, safely. And that's home. Again, hopefully this video provides some, some great insights. And uh, we want to have target zero accidents and zero injuries throughout people. The segment on being prepared or being prepared for your day. The best way to start your day in the morning is stretching. You're going to do things now that you probably haven't been used to be doing over the last couple weeks, months, uh, on a, especially on a daily basis. The lifting of the packages, the moving of packages and delivering packages and the number of steps we're going to walk, all those kind of things, you're going to be a little bit sore. So the best thing you can do to start your day is some stretching. We'll just do, a, I'll just do some examples of some stretches that we as drivers do every morning. So the, the first one is simply just move your, your left hand, your left arm across your chest and stretch that out a little bit. You want to hold for a count probably about eight seconds. Um, don't bounce, don't jerk it. Switch sides, get both sides done. You really should feel the, the pull and, and not on your arm, but your back a little bit. We want to put two fists in the back. Push against your back as you lean back a little bit. Help stretch those back muscles out some. All right, again, you want to do that for about eight seconds. 8, 10 seconds, and then you want to bend over and touch your toes or get as far as you can. Some people might be shins, you might be able to reach all the way down to your toes. Again, keep it for a period of time so you can really feel the stretch. Another one you want to do, put that foot forward, put your weight on it, stretch out your calves. Do that both sides. What I like to do, I think they call it the elephant trunk, when you just you go from side to side, all four sides, front, back, left, right. And then one of the last we like to do is just stretch it. Reach all the way up to the sky. Do those every every morning. You may have to do them throughout the day if you get a little tight. But believe it or not, those really help you get through your day uh, safely and efficiently. All right, back on to Team Brown. B stands for be prepared. And one of the first things we do as drivers before we leave the building is a proper pre-trip. We want to make sure that everything on our vehicle is properly functioning uh, so that we don't get out on our route whether it be nearby or way out in the country and need assistance of some sort. So a proper pre-trip to me starts at your house with your own vehicle and even again, wherever the, the point of pickup is for you. So as you approach your vehicle when you uh, get out in the morning, or like I said, at the building, approach your vehicle and do a quick walk around, make sure all your tires are properly inflated. You wanna make sure that there's no, uh, no nails, um, your tires aren't flat, you want to make sure the windshield wiper, if you have one in the back, is in good condition. Nothing obstructing your view. Either way on the windows, you have clean windows. Again, make sure all your, uh, your tires are, are properly level. Another thing I would like to do is check your windshield wipers. And make sure they're proper, make sure they're attached, and make sure they're in good condition. The last thing you want to do is get out there and something happen to one of your windshield wipers. We're also going to test our headlights. Uh, which you should do, but we're going to do that at the very end. I'll turn them on, get out, and make sure they're on. So, having done that, we want to make sure there's nothing underneath in the front. No leaks. As you walk out, you want to make sure you don't see any puddles, that your vehicle may be leaking of some sort. That's a, that's a sure sign that there could be a leak, is if you see a puddle uh, underneath your vehicle. So, make sure that that's taken care of. Other than that, we'll go inside now. Okay, now that we've done a walk around, done a pre-trip on the outside, 
We're gonna go ahead and do a pre-trip on the inside. To do that, let's go ahead and start the vehicle. One, to make sure it starts. Anytime we're in the driver's seat, we wanna have our seat belts on. So not only do we wanna have it on for protection, but also make sure it works, and it does work. We are locked in. Next, I wanna check, make sure the defrost works. Turn it on the heat, check to make sure you got air coming out, and we do. That's good. Now we wanna check and make sure our mirrors are clean and clear, we can see them, and our rear view mirror. Also make sure our windows aren't too dirty that we can't see without them, see out them. Check for any dummy lights that might be on. Looks like we're good on dummy lights. Wanna make sure that our um, um, gas, we have enough fuel to get where we're going as a PVD driver. You know, you have the, the, the freedom to, to stop and get fuel when you need to. Another thing I wanna mention while we're here is to make sure that when you do load up with packages, that you don't load in such a manner that you cannot see out any of these windows. No matter what kind of vehicle you on, are in, the most important thing is that we can see out. We wanna make sure that our blind spots, spots aren't, aren't blocked and that we have clean vision all the way around to protect ourselves and also the community we serve. All right, now that we've done that, something else we wanna to check to make sure it's working, we're gonna go ahead and hit the hazard button. Obviously the indicator says they work, but now I'm gonna shut off the motor, keeping the lights and the hazards on. I wanna physically get out and check that they work uh, so that I know if we're good. Okay, so the next segment uh, in Team Brown is the R, and that stands for reputation, and that's really big amongst us drivers. Um, you guys will represent us, and at the same time, we'll represent you, because we may have been there the day before with the stop, and, and you're gonna be the next person. And so what we may have done the day before actually is a reflection on you. So we're all one in this together. But we call it representing the shield. And part of that is by your actions, as what you do, your behaviors, what you say, to the customer and how you say it, your inflection, and what we look like. So on those three things, that's how we set ourselves apart from our competitors. We wanna make sure that uh, when you get out of the vehicle to make the delivery, don't be eating anything, you don't wanna be smoking, you don't wanna be talking on the phone, you wanna give them their, your utmost attention from the very get-go. That begins as soon as you pull up in front of the house or you pull in the driveway, whatever the case may be. You're at that stop, the attention should be on them. What we look like be our appearance standards. Now, I don't know that y'all have uniforms like we do, uh, but you will, of course, have some sort of attire. So just make sure that it's neat. Um, if you wear a hat, don't wear it backwards. Wear it the way it's supposed to be worn. Again, that's what sets us apart from our, uh, our competitors. Um, if, you, uh, if you do have facial hair, make sure that it's at least clean shaven. It's not all scrabbly. We wanna make sure that that, that, that looks good. And then uh, the appearance of the vehicle as well. You know, it, it, make sure that you, your, your vehicle that you use is, is as good as it, it can possibly be. Um, that there's no music blaring, you know, when you open your door or when you pull up, you know, that leaves a, a bad uh, taste sometimes in our customer's mouth and they don't like to do that. Again, it's, it's something that sets ourselves apart. So that part of it is, is representing the shield, uh, is, is the appearance and all that. Secondly, as is just a reminder, in today's world, somebody's always watching us. Somebody's always watching what we do. Either whether it be a doorbell cam, cam which probably 80% of all houses now have, it's a security cam, or believe it or not, we'll get people just walking down the road that'll just videotape us. Uh, whether the expectation is that we're gonna mess up or, or who knows, but we, we've had that several times that um, as you're unloading a car and somebody will start taping you just uh, out of the blue. So just know that we're always being watched. So that goes in the part with hand to service. Make sure we're caring for that package as best we can. You know, don't walk halfway upstairs and throw it on the porch. You know, don't stand from your car and try to pitch it all the way up there. Walk the package up and treat it as you would treat to what we call, we treat, treat every package like you would your grandmother's package. Um, you know, we may not treat our own packages that well, but sure everybody takes care of their grandmother's package. And, and you can, all you gotta do is YouTube and see so many daggone packages and people, the way they treat these things and throw them over fences and stuff like that. So hand the surface, treat it like it's your grandmother's. Okay, 
Because we're heading out the, uh, we'll talk about the O in Team Brown, which is obey all traffic laws. We're heading to a stop, and of course, we're already hitting a, a traffic signal. It was green, so obviously we can go there. We want to make sure, though, if it's red, we want to come to a complete stop. No California rolls, same way with stop signs as well. We want to also maintain speed limits. Um, so obviously we're coming upon a speed limit sign here. Speed limit here is 45. So uh, we want to maintain as best as possible the speed limits. Uh, watch for construction zones um, and stuff like that. Uh, another part of that uh, is make sure we use turn signals. Uh, a lot of people don't realize, but through using your turn signals, uh, you can be pulled over for, for not doing a proper turn signal. So we want to make sure that uh, we're using our turn signals uh, for those people behind us to help prevent us from getting hit in the rear end. Uh, goes along with that when you're getting ready to make a stop um, for a delivery or, or for whatever reason, make sure you're using your hazard signals, uh, your hazard buttons. Let people know that um, you know, you're going to be pulling over for that. We should have a, a subdivision coming up here soon um, for our stop. Okay, so here's our subdivision we're going to be delivered to. And we want to talk about the transition. So we're, we're at speed 50. Obviously, we were going into a uh, subdivision, so we're going to signal. And right away, we can see the speed limit's now 20. So make sure that uh, we obey that. Also said kids at play. That also lets us know, of course, we're going to have a lot of kids in here. As we come up on a delivery, our delivery is actually going to be this house on the left. But we don't swerve over into traffic to make that delivery. We're going to pull up on the side of the road across from it. Do not block the driveway. Signal our intentions. Put it in park and deliver from here. All right, now to our next neighborhood. We transitioned again from um, the 50 mile per hour. Again, we're going to transition to neighborhood. Speed limit signs 20. Slow children at play. Again, obey all traffic signs, obey all signs in the neighborhood. Um, we've had drivers, unfortunately, before get called in on for, for going at a higher rate of speed through subdivisions and neighborhoods. So make sure we're following all protocol of that neighborhood as well. All traffic laws, and as you can see, we got a speed limit sign, a road work sign. That speed limit was 50. Now it's decreased to 40. So, I mean, it's simple, it's obvious, but we wanna make sure that we're following all traffic signs at all times. Another segment in Team Brown is, the, of course, of the O, obey all traffic laws, is distracted driving. And honestly, there's two parts of distracted driving. There's the mental part and there's the physical part, which we all know of and we'll talk about in a minute. But the mental part of distracted driving is when your mind's somewhere else. Maybe something's going on at home or something's, something's bothering you. Um, a good thing to keep in mind is that if something's bothering you that much, you know, maybe, maybe just pull over for five minutes or so, clear your mind, that kind of thing. You don't want your mind to be elsewhere. We need to be focused on the road and focused on driving. So do what you need to do um, to make sure that our thoughts and our mind are in the right place as well. Um, but of course, the part we all know about is the physical part of distracted driving. So we don't want to have any food. We don't want to be eating sandwiches while we're driving down the road or putting on makeup. Um, or anything else. You don't want to be on your phone. I know that's a tough one as a, as a PVD driver because I think our phones, the phones you're going to be using, maybe have some navigation to them. So we want to just at least limit the use of the phone as much as possible. Uh, but definitely don't don't be talking on the phone uh, while you're doing it. I know actually in the state of Indiana, Indiana now, if you're doing a commercial job and on your cell phone, you're supposed to be fine. But um, so we want to just take that element out of it. Even drinking can be a form of distracted driving if, you, if you've got a cup. Um, but but uh, the main thing we want to do is just make sure we're focused straight ahead, uh, keep our eyes on the road, our hands on the wheel, and uh, our mind where it needs to be, and we'll stay safe. Another segment of the W uh, for work methods is going to be loading and even unloading the vehicle that you use. Um, we don't know where you're gonna be at. I'm not sure. You may pick up from the building. That's where we're at now. Uh, that's what we're gonna use. You may actually pick up from a driver on his route from his truck. You may pick up from a pod. Um, 
but we want to show a few tips on, on how to properly load the vehicle. Um, first, obviously, we, we, we're going to cover is uh, opposite corners, grass from opposite corners. And you want to bend at the knees when you go to load the, load the vehicle. Get everything nice and secure and neat when possible so nothing is moving, falling uh, while you're driving. You don't want to block. You don't want to block your rear view mirror with any packs. So don't get them up this high where you can't see out. Or you also don't want to affect your blind spots. This has to be a nice van so you can actually stack pretty far in there. So we're going to grab some, some packages from the opposite corners and, and slowly build this stuff up. Um, you kind of get the gist from that. Another thing I want to talk about is our power zone. We want to stay inside our power zone. The UPS, this is really big. Your power zone, if you're familiar with baseball, is essentially the same as a strike zone. It's from the, the upper part of your chest down to your knees. And you want to keep every package as possible inside of that. As you can see, anything lower than that or above that is considered a danger zone. The most powerful part of your body is within that power zone. So we want to keep all of our work in our power zone while we work. So. Um, Keep grasping that. One thing we're gonna make sure of too is if you happen to put them in the seats, the back seats, secure those as well. Don't put them in the front seats and then they start flying everywhere because that becomes part of distracted driving and, and we don't want that. So no matter what we do, have a rhyme or a reason. It's kind of a puzzle. Put it all together. Get it as secure as possible when you're stacking in there and uh, things will work out well. So part of the W in Team Brown is work methods. So I know that we're coming upon our uh, next stop. And as I know that, I'm gonna prepare to put my hazards on to let those people around me, behind me and around me, know that I'm preparing to slow and to stop. I'm gonna make sure that I actually uh, don't park in front of the driveway or even block part of the driveway. So in this instance, I'm gonna pull on up Get off the side of the road as much as possible. Always put your vehicle in park. Let's turn our vehicle off. Before I get out of the vehicle, I'm gonna check my mirror to make sure it's safe to get out of the vehicle. And then I'll proceed from there. So it is safe, we're gonna get out. All right, now that we've secured the vehicle, we're gonna go ahead and um, find the package we're looking for for the house. While we're here, well, this is where we're going to go ahead and scan the package so we don't have to do it while we're walking up and keep our eyes distracted. So we're going to scan the package. Go ahead and put it in a rain bag. The weather it is today, it needs to be protected, so we're going to keep it out of, keep it out of the weather. Now, as we walk toward the walk path, towards the house we're going to go, we want the safest walk path. A couple things we're going to be watching for here. We got wet leaves, slips, trips, and falls. So you got to treat them as though they were ice because they can be. Another thing we want to look for is signs of animals, signs of dogs. I don't see any dog toys. I don't see chains. I don't see a dog house or anything like that. So it looks like we're going to be fine there. And another thing we want to do is announce ourselves. UPS, walk up to the house. Go ahead and ring the doorbell again. Lock on if you want, UPS. Place the package under the mat if it's there to hide it. This is where we want to stop, complete our stop. Again, so that as we walk back, our eyes are forward. We don't have to, we don't have to focus on anything else but getting back safely. Um, now as you approach your vehicle, always look left, right, and left for traffic coming. And another thing I want to point out is if we would have had a package for across the street, this is the same location we would have parked at. You do not cross in front of traffic facing the opposite way to deliver over there. That is something we see our competitors do all the time. That's not something we do. We want to stay safe and do what's appropriate. So again, you want to look left, right, left, approach the vehicle, and get on to your next stop. All right, now that we're back in the vehicle, we're going to start it up. Before we even put it in gear, we want to go ahead and take off our emergency flashers. We want to look out our left shoulder to make sure nothing's coming in our blind spot, check our mirrors, and signal our intentions. Put the vehicle in drive, all the while keeping an eye on what's coming, get back in the line of traffic, ready to go to our next stop. And now I'm gonna be talking to you about the five keys to preventing slips and falls. 
which is important on days like today, especially when we have wet leaves, uh, slippery and un uneven surfaces like at this apartment here. Uh, so the acronym we use for this is LEADS. The L is look before stepping. If you look, you will see uh, the wet leaves like I already mentioned. The E is established firm footing. That's where proper footwear comes into play, but also more importantly than that is using uh, the use of three points of contact, using things like a handrail. Always be sure you have three points of contact. A is adjust to changing conditions. Overcast, rain, snow as we get into winter, uh, things like that are really gonna come into play a lot, so you wanna adjust to those changing conditions. D is don't run, walk at a brisk pace. If you don't wanna be running, that will only increase the chances for a slip and fall injury. Then S doesn't really come into play with PVD drivers that much, but it'll stay off moving belts and rollers. But again, it's leads. Look before stepping, establish firm footing, adjust to changing conditions, don't run, and walk at a brisk pace. So the W in Team Brown, again, is work methods. And so right now we're going to talk about the five scene habits. It's part of the basic training that we all have as UPS drivers that we need to follow and recite and know. Because if you don't know it, it's hard to actually use it. So the first, there's five keys. Uh, and the first one's aim high and steering. How you do that is you look just straight, straight over the vehicle, almost like if you were throwing a baseball, you want to follow the path. So you want to follow the path of your vehicle. It helps you keep centered in a lane of traffic, and it helps you keep centered on, on uh, turns as well. And so we always have key phrases of these things, and the key phrase on this is uh, find a safe path well ahead. Um, that was um, aim high and steering. The next one is uh, get the big picture. And what you want to do that is realize how wide, how deep, and what's in it. So you want to look from, we'll call it building line, the building line, or tree line, the tree line, depending on if you're in the country or you're in the city. And you just want to, you know, take it all in. Don't just focus on what's ahead of you. You want to see what's ahead and stay in between it, obviously. But you need the peripheral part of it, too. So you want to see what's in objects and grounds. You know, it helps us stay away from billboards. It helps us keep be, from being blocked. By, by semi trucks, from billboards, and stuff like that. And the key phrase we always say is just stay back and see it all. The next one is keep your eyes moving. Very simplistic. Um, you want to move your, your, your eyes from side to side every five, check our mirrors every five to eight seconds, but make sure you're always looking in the front every two seconds. So, uh, again, that's keep your eyes moving. And the key, the key phrase we like to use there is scan, don't stare. And it, it definitely keeps you alive at intersections. Always keep your eyes moving. You never know what, what, can, what can happen. The next one is leave yourself an out. You always want to have an escape route. I always know. But if you're checking those mirrors like I just talked about, you know what's behind you. You should know what's beside you. Um, so you always have space on all four sides. But the one side we can control is what's in front of us. So you always keep a space kitchen in front of you. Sometimes people pull in front of you, it's easy to control that. Just break a little bit and keep that spacing. The other ones can be a little more difficult, but always have an escape route. The key, the key phrase there is be prepared, expect the unexpected, because we all know not everybody uses a turn signal either. They're gonna cut you off at times, and, and who knows what could happen. We got some, uh, uh, it's like some, some government workers here you know, they might walk out in front of you. So always be prepared, expect the unexpected, you know, create that. The last one is make sure they see you. And similar to what I just did there, you know, he turned around, I hit the horn because I want to create that eye contact. You want to communicate in traffic using your horns, your lights, and your signals. Uh, you know, if you need to flash somebody, tell them to slow down, maybe something's behind you. Um, you know, obviously use a horn. If you, if you come up somebody walking, they don't, you know, cut out in front of you. Um, all that kind of good stuff. So it, what's it do? It, it establishes eye contact. You see them, they see you. And um, the, the key phrase there is don't gamble. Use your horns, lights, and signals. So that's just part of the training. That's probably our biggest training that we have as a UPS driver. It, it's kind of like uh, our go-to book, our handbook of what we do. Hi, I'm Jason, and I'm going to go over the eight keys to lifting and lowering a package. It's really simple. First, you're going to get close to the object and position your feet shoulder width apart. You're going to bend at the knees, not at the waist. Grasp the object by opposite corners. I'm going to test it 
for weight and shifting contents. Then you'll lift in a smooth and steady motion, not jerking. Then you pivot, don't twist your body. The last one is to use existing tools and equipment, which would be things like a dolly or a cart. I don't know if that will apply to PVD drivers like you all, uh, if you'll have a cart or not. But if you do, uh, that does come in handy to help you get through your day and take some stress and load off of your body. That's it for the eight keys to lifting and lowering. As we're approaching this intersection up here, we want to make sure that we're scanning as we approach all intersections. If there's a vehicle in front of you, we want to make sure that we stop at least one car length behind that car. If there's not a car and we go up to the line, we want to make sure that we're stopped behind that line. Not on it, not over it, not past it. Stop behind that line. Come to a complete stop. No California rolls. So we come to a complete stop. We're going to look left, right, left. Continue to do that. We always want to scan the intersection as long as we're here. Another good thing to mention while at intersections or anywhere else is expect the unexpected, but especially at intersections. You can't rely on anybody to, to stop at a red light anymore. You can go to any intersection you want, and if you just stop and watch, you'll find somebody run a red light probably within the first three minutes. So just because your light's green and there's red, don't just dart out in the traffic. When my light turns green, the first thing I'm going to do is count 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. I'm going to clear my intersection and then I'll proceed forward. Not before. So we got the yellow arrow coming. I, I would uh, assume that our light's gonna get ready to, to turn green. And again, I'm still scanning as I go. I wanna see what's coming and the possibility of it. My light turned green, 1001, 1002, 1003. I'm scanning left, right, left as I enter. I proceed on. That's the proper way to handle an intersection. All right, so part of Team Brown again, what we've been talking about this whole time, the end is never risk it. And part of that, uh, part of that bit is as we're driving through here, uh, most people think intersections are stop lights and, and stop signs, but actually everything we're he seeing right now is an intersection. Driveways are intersections. Intersections by design are points of conflict. So you want to make sure that no matter as you're driving down these subdivisions, we're looking left and right, getting the big picture. You want to be scanning everything. Another part of uh, the never risk it segment is dog bites. It's something that, uh, unfortunately, uh, we probably have at least one dog bite out of our center a year, and it's, it's pretty prevalent throughout the industry. Uh, there's a couple do's and don'ts to dog bites, and they're on these pieces of paper, which honestly, we're gonna try to give them to you, but some key notes are some do's and don'ts. You do wanna look for signs of life for dog. When you pull up next to a, a house that you're gonna deliver to, you wanna see if you can see uh, any dog bowls, any dog uh, toys. You wanna see if there's a chain in the yard and even look for, for uh, defecate uh, to see if there's any dog poop in the yard. Those are all signs that those people have animals and for you to be on high alert. Another do is to initially, if you come across a dog, initially stand your ground. If it becomes a little bit aggressive to you, initially stand your ground, use the package as a shield. Don't try to use your hand, use the package as a shield. You always wanna expect the unexpected too when it comes to animals. Dogs can never be trusted. You know, especially you don't know anything about that dog, don't assume that that dog is friendly dog, even if the customer wants to tell you, my dog doesn't bite, it's friendly. You'll never assume, always expect the unexpected. When you come to a house, announce your presence. And so if you always say UPS, but I always let you know, you can hear if a dog is actually in the house or not. So announce your presence. And if you do see a dog at the house, ensure that the dog is secure. There's no, there's no uh, nothing wrong with if you see a dog and you see somebody at the, 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 the door, to just ask the customer, you know, please, please see, can you please secure your dog and make sure that he doesn't come out. You can actually even put your foot against the door so that they can't open the door, okay? That is, a, that is a great method to prevent a dog bite. So those are some of the do's. Some of the don'ts, don't ever turn your back on a dog. You know, if you come across an aggressive dog, slowly back away from that dog. Another don't is don't sneak up. If you see a dog that happens to be lying on the porch or you think it's sleeping, you think, hey, I'm just gonna drop this package and leave. 
inevitably, I can't tell you how many times we've had drivers bit by dogs because they want to sneak up or they think they can, and then you startle the dog and it makes it 10 times worse. So don't ever sneak up on a dog. Don't carry dog treats. You know, we, we tell our drivers that. Some still do, unfortunately, but don't carry dog treats. You, you don't know, you know, what, what you could start with that or, or some, some things like that. Don't try to pet the dog. Again, no matter how, how friendly the, 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 the customer tells you the dog can be or how gentle it looks, don't try to pet the dog. Don't get out of the car if the dog is coming up to your vehicle. Stay in the vehicle and honk the horn. The customer will generally come out, they'll get the dog back or the dog will leave. If by chance it doesn't, don't deliver to that location. You can call the center, call one of the mentors or one of your drivers that can come out and they can tell you what to do with that package. Again, this is all about not taking risk. We're gonna to try to prevent as many accidents and injuries out there as we possibly can by following this. And then lastly, don't make eye contact with the dog. Uh, just go about your business. You know, if, it, if, if you can, the, the, the owner has the dog, um, but we don't wanna make eye contact with the dogs either. So you follow all these methods, we'll try to get you a copy of this as well, uh, but that'll help prevent dog bites. All right, another component of the never risk it is uh, smart parking, park smart. And I don't know if you'll ever deliver to uh, business locations like this, but when you see over here at this parking, there's not really a whole lot of place to park. So rather than risk it and try to get into one of those parking spaces, it's better to just make the turn and park out here. Or what have you cost yourself? Maybe 20 yards to be able to park, but you've absolutely eliminated 90% of the risk. All right, we got another delivery on this street. And as part of the Park Smart um, segment of this, as you can see, it's narrow, it's tight. Um, so we got a house up here we're gonna deliver to. The house is actually on the left. Once again, we're not gonna pull to the left, the opposite way of traffic. We're gonna keep going. Our stop's just up here. We're not gonna stop in the middle of the road, that way we block the entire road. We're gonna pull, there's our delivery point here. We're gonna pull just maybe 15 yards up, get our hazards. And now we'll get out and walk it across the street. Yeah, we may have cost ourselves maybe 10 yards, but again, we've taken out 90% of the risk. And that's what we wanna do. We wanna work safer. Okay, so the, the last uh, form of uh, parking is residential parking. So I know I got a, a package for a house coming up here on my left. It's gonna be in a curve. We don't wanna stay on the road. Um, so we're gonna back. So one of the back, the backing rules are what? We're gonna back first, and we're gonna back to the driver's side. So I'm gonna pull forward, I'm scanning my area as I do it, turn on my flashers. As I put it in reverse, I'm gonna honk to signal my intentions. I'm gonna continue to use my mirrors, use my monitor as a third mirror. But the key of this residential back, as with all of them, is how far do we back? We only wanna back as far as necessary to get off the road. This is as far as I need to back. The key to this back is, as you can see, the actual house I'm going to is a good ways back. But again, all we want to do is back as far as necessary to get off the road. The reason being is we don't know the hanging tree limbs that are coming down, where there could be a basketball goal, power lines, or anything else. So you only back as far as necessary to get off the main road. Another part of the end, part of Team Brown is never risk it. Um, you never want to back. Avoid backing at all possible, if at all possible. Most of the deliveries that you guys and ladies are going to have are going to be residentials. You should be able to per pull up to the curbside again, not blocking the driveways or anything like that. So um, there may be an occasion or two where, where we have to back, but 99% of the time we should not have to. So avoid any and all backing. Um, it's too much of a risk. We're gonna take the risk out of everything to reduce again, the threat of accidents and or injuries. Back to N on Team Brown and never risk it. One thing we wanna talk about in finishing up this video is 
our most important stop of the day. Never risk it, never take any chances. Don't do anything stupid and be sure that you get yourself home to that most important stop every day like I am right now. Thanks a lot.